Hello and thank you for your attendance at this presentation. My name is Charles McBride. I'm an architect and educator at the University of Texas at Arlington. This paper is called Teaching Lightweight and Tensile Structures, a Pedagogy for Beginning Design Students. This presentation is a condensed version of the paper and briefly describes the efforts of the non-studio workshop course that I've been developing and teaching, especially with regard to the outcomes and its emphasis on model making. The workshop has been taught twice and is scheduled again for this coming spring 2022. The workshop's results have also been useful in the development of a graduate design studio that I'll quickly touch on. To begin, the workshop course is primarily a hands-on modeling lab where students learn basic structural principles and forces by building and often failing at a series of weekly assignments. The course is supplemented by discussions ranging from historical precedents to structural concepts to geometry and representational technique. These examples show the first modeling assignment where student pairs assemble rudimentary chain suspension models. This is often their introduction to the wood shop and to, the, to modeling materials other than chipboard and basswood. Notice the struggle with the material scale and connections, which ultimately improve alongside a continued discussion about detailing. Basic modeling techniques and expectations of improving craftsmanship are all part of the initial modeling assignments. Here are some very familiar examples of non-rigid membrane and mass models where the students are again experimenting with less familiar materials and connections. Ambitious students quickly realize that formal expression cannot be independent from structural understanding. A desire for complex forms are often met with unresolved edges, seams, and connections. Here's a non-rigid membrane model that's not particularly different or better than many of the others, but nonetheless captures the essence of the, of the workshop. It is a working model showing the student's progress, working through failures, being revised, built, and rebuilt. The invention of ad hoc connectors and fasteners and the use of grid overlays demonstrate that the model has been useful as both a learning tool and a measurement device. Wetting and then bending wood dowels creates an arched edge, which in this case needed to be tensioned to a lower height using the black string in the foreground. Following the suspension and membrane assignments, an introduction of rigid shells, geodesics, regular and irregular geometries, and tensegrity structures is made. The workshop by this time has settled into a fast yet productive pace for the modeling assignments and can adjust toward particular student interests. The most recent workshop developed an interest in cable nets in the work of Fry Otto, while the first workshop seen here developed an interest in geodesic shapes and the examples of Buckminster Fuller. Generating the models and variations on the left can be done easily using a laser cutter. The first workshop students initiated their own project outside of the course assignments, constructing a rhombi icosododecahedron nearly eight feet in diameter. A large design and installation project is the final assignment in the course. This unexpected project worked to coalesce the students and further increase the dynamics of understanding geodesic structures. One of the most successful final projects was completed by a group that constructed and installed a 60 foot long tensegrity bridge in the studio space. Other final projects included an irregular grid membrane and a tensile column. The second workshop students seen here worked in teams on prototype cable net models. Again, we see a developing understanding of detailing and form finding. This exercise, however, like the previous images from the uh, Rambi Icosododecahedron, brought the students together and elevated their excitement for the course. Even before these models were completed, speculation about a whole class full-size cable net installation were being discussed. Unfortunately, these images immediately preceded the pandemic lockdown in March 2020 and the rest of the semester was spent online. The physical making and planned construction was replaced by computer modeling and Zoom sessions. 
An independent research project was completed by an undergraduate student at the same time as the second workshop. The model here is of Fry Otto's Institute for Lightweight Structures in Stuttgart and was constructed as a complement to the developing cable net projects seen in the previous images. The success of this model provides another teaching opportunity toward the investigation of precedent projects and the construction of structural or force models rather than the more typical architectural or surface models. Here are some of the details of the model construction in progress, again emphasizing the resourcefulness of the students in adapting or altering off-the-shelf hardware, lessons from poor material selection or connection choices continue to serve as an effective learning tool. For example, the wood mass to cable connector seen here was quickly replaced by a small diameter metal hose clamp. The success of the workshop has been, uh, the success of the workshop has suggested strategies in the development of my graduate design studio entitled Armatures and Scaffolding. This is one recent project that has created a replica of a common object by restructuring it using a lightweight frame. The exploration then leads to an integrated architectural design and is scaled up for potential occupation. The studio is focused on the concept of an armature as the intermediary component detailed in between two primary systems such as structure and skin. To conclude, the workshop has solidified many of the outcomes and methodologies that architecture faculty take for granted. Many of them are listed here. The paper makes additional cases for better integration of design and structural teaching, especially during a student's beginning years, and the importance of understanding the physical and material properties of tensile and lightweight structures as a way to better utilize 3D modeling software such as Rhino. Thank you for your attention. It has been my pleasure presenting this work to you.